Hey guys, I am Paradox, and welcome back to the adventures of Joffrey, the wise, the pure, and the kind. Obviously, words are thrown about around about him all the time, as I'm sure you guys all know, um, and, and agree, definitely. I'm sure no one would disagree with that. Uh, no sarcasm at all. But yes, last time, we basically secured the Iron Throne for ourselves and we defeated Stannis and we've now just got to deal with Rob Stark. Now we've basically almost done that, we're on 80% so it shouldn't be long now. Um, obviously once to defeat him though the Ironborn will have to be dealt with because they'll stay independent which is very annoying. Um, Rob Stark's armies are basically gone though he has gained the support of the Stormlands. Now obviously you'd think oh well that's bad. For some reason the Stormlands don't like Joffrey's rule. No idea why. Can't see why I'd be upset with him at all, but yes, um, they've joined Rob Stark's side, most of them. Um, now, I think it'd be a bad thing, but it's not really, because the problem is, is that they're all separate. So they've all, you know, raised their tiny armies and are all trying to help, which really is not good for Rob. In a way, it's a hindrance, because I can just walk about, taking out all these little armies, gain an extra war score, and they're not really going to help him. They're just in the way for both of us, in a way. So, they're not really a big help for him. Um, a couple of things I noticed initially, um, I was going to be marrying Sansa to, oh, some people guessed it, I was thinking of marrying her to Ramsay Snow at the end of the war. Roose Bolton's son, Ramsay Snow, um, which I thought would have been a very cruel thing, um, but Joffrey obviously wants to be cruel to Sansa, so I thought it would be great, and I could probably make Roose Bolton then Warden of the North, and obviously marrying then Ramsay Snow to Sansa would legitimise their rule, which is what I was going with. But he's already married someone, I should have married them anyway, but they've already married now, so I can't do that. I'm going to think of something else. A lot of people say I'm marrying her to uh, Tyrion, but I don't want to do that because if I marry her to Tyrion, Tyrion's going to be inheriting the Westerlands, and then I'll inherit the North. Well, his son will at least inherit both. Now that's a very powerful lord. I don't want to create a guy with two permanencies. That is a way, you don't want to have to deal with that. Um, so I'm not. Gonna, that's why I'm not doing that. I'm going to have to think of someone else. I'm not sure, maybe Sir Illin Payne. <laughs> just for fun. It has to be something mean. It has to be something despicable. I haven't decided. And obviously I need to think about who I'm going to be giving places to. Because I'm going to have the North. I'm going to have the Riverlands. I've got the Stormlands. I'm going to give Dragonstone to Tommen. And then the question is, should I give him the Stormlands? At the moment I've noticed that in the factions, Davos, the Onion Knight, has actually made a Crown Loyalist faction. So he's definitely gained my regard, to be honest. Maybe I should give him the Stormlands. Because I can imagine Joffrey liking a bit of a kiss-ass someone who does what he tells him to do. Like with the Hound. You know, Sander Clegane. He liked Sander Clegane because he just did what he told him. <laughs> I can imagine Joffrey does like people like that. So I wasn't really surprised he liked him. So maybe he would like someone like Davos because he obviously wants to support him. Even if he doesn't like me. So what I'm going to do, I'm give him a little present. We're going to award him an honorary title of... Master of the Ships, because Master of the Ships would suit him. He was a smuggler, he was a pirate, so that's what makes sense. We'll give him that. Doesn't mean he'll like me much, but I haven't got much money to give away at the moment, so I can't give him money. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. If he's still in the Crown Lawyer's faction, maybe I should give him the Stormlands. I'll have to think about the others as well. I have to think about what I want to do. The Veil, as usual, is in chaos. Always happens. Robert Aaron can never hold the Veil. He's too sickly, he's too weak. Um, people always rise and revolt for Harold Aaron. So he'll probably be losing the veil. And also, I noticed this before I started, uh, the king beyond the wall is Craster. Craster of Craster's Keep is the king beyond the wall. <laughs> Very random. No idea why. <laughs> um, but yeah, there you go. So Craster is now king beyond the wall. Very unexpected. And the Greyjoys are starting to cause a nuisance for the north. So yeah, let's see if we can try and get that last percentage. Now, what was I doing? Okay, we're here. Heading that way for some reason. Uh, we might as well head for the... For Cape Wrath Army. Yeah, it's the biggest army about. We'll head for them. Definitely, I'll, I'll deal with all the places once the war's over. Ah, the Septon has died. Tragic. Oh well. No one have to be selected. Hold on. And also, obviously, my opinions and my choices are going to be slightly affected by the fact I'm only 15. Because I have a Regency at the moment. I obviously have Cersei Lannister. So obviously she's more in control. And obviously Tywin is as well. So them two are going to make more of the decisions. But obviously Joffrey is very much. Kind of make his own decisions for himself a lot of the time. And um, actually we have. A Bale of Rollingford. Who I 
I turned him into a eunuch. Kindly, I could have killed him, but I turned him into a eunuch. And now he's plotting again. What is wrong with you? Kill me? Are you kidding me? End your plot. And he would end it, but because that's such a vicious plot. Like, normally most of the plots aren't that bad. That one's a terrible one. And I was kind to him. I, I was lenient. So I'm going to have to imprison him. And there we go. <laughs> now I need to think what I'm going to do with him this time. Should I kill him? But then again, Joffrey would be thinking, you know, killing is... Killing's too nice. Killing's too nice. For someone like that, I think what we should do is uh, maybe blind him as well. So, so he'd be a blind eunuch. It makes sense, you know. So there we go. He's now a blind eunuch. <laughs> That's what you get. You do not cross me. Do not cross me. Okay, we'll send an army after them. We'll defeat a few of these Stormlander armies. Once we've defeated them, we'll then head north to get the last few percentage. Oh, he died in my jail. Okay. So we gain another place I need to give away. Ah, a representative from the Iron Bank of Bravos is here. Reminded me of that loan I took. Now, obviously, um, the Iron Throne is actually heavily indebted to the Iron Bank, uh, Tywin Lannister, and I think the Tyrells as well. They basically have loaned a lot of money from a lot of people. Um, due to Robert Baratheon's heavy expenditure, shall we say. And probably from uh, Littlefinger's sneaky uh, sneaky way of making money from loans and stuff. And investiture and stuff. So we owe him a lot of money. Now, being me, I'd probably sell him to sod off. I'm never going to give him any money because I'm the king. Why, why should I give them money? I'm a king. I have no one to answer to. I don't need to answer to them. But... We are young, so at the moment Tywin is my lord. Not my lord, but he's, he's technically in charge. Um, so he'll say we need more time to raise funds. So we're going to go out for now. But once I have no regency, I can choose myself. So we'll do that. So next time they come, most likely I'll say the other one. Like I said, I like to roleplay. <laughs> okay. Huh. No other big armies, apart from that one. We'll that will be the last one. And then we'll head north. We'll take out Maidenpool, Darry, and Haraway Town. Try and get that last little bit of points. We need 100%. Come on. 14,000 men. Where are you guys going? Okay, you are coming this way. I thought they were heading the other way. <laughs> That's what I say. What the hell's Mace Sorrel doing? They're trying to take Dragonstone. That could be annoying. That could be annoying. Yeah. Thank you there, little finger. You've been very good, as usual. Ah, Lord Jamie the Kingslayer has been released from King Rob the Young Wolf's dungeon. Wow. Someone, I'm assuming, saved him. Well, good luck there. Whoever did that. Can you end your plot, please, uh, Septon? So we got a Kingslayer back. We got my uncle. He's fine, or should I say, <coughs> father. But yes, the Kingslayer's back. Very good. Okay. I like they called that his mother died in an accident. Because <laughs> as we know, she died giving birth to Tyrion. So I like the fact they called it died in an accident. <laughs> I mean, it is an accident, but it's just a funny way to put it. And obviously you can't put died giving birth. Because I don't think they have that on this. Which is a bit weird. But yeah, Jamie the Kinsler is back. That's great. Has he got all his hands? <laughs> is he all in one piece, basically? Yes, he is. That's great. Okay. We defeated that army as well. So now we can head to Maidenpool. Now that we have Jamie back, I feel quite, uh, quite, quite sure we can win this. I feel like we can win this, definitely. Ill and Payne, uh, you can be swapped for Jamie. Jamie Lannister shall lead. Fight back against those that imprisoned him. Be very good. And obviously, he's a great general anyway. And he's Lord Commander of the King's Guard. He needs to protect me. Got a small army there. Really? 30. 39 men defend that. Okay, we're going to head here. I can't lose points with these little guys down here. Okay, they took that place as well. God. Uh, he doesn't seem godly to me. Money has been disappearing from the treasure. I suspect my regent, Queen Mother Cersei. She's a sneaky little, sneaky little devil, isn't she? Okay, responding well. Ah, good for you, Tommen. Okay. How have we got there yet? Come on, get there. 
How long does it take to get there? You've almost been there for like days. Jesus. Okay, well, at least we didn't get them capture it. Okay, not sure where you're going, Fawn Town. What have you? Where have you been going? What? Why did you need to go there? In the, oh, I'm not even gonna question the Tyrells. They're just being crazy. That's been ridiculous. Have I got any children? Actually, I can't remember. Yes, I do. I do have a daughter, Rhonda. How are you doing, Marjorie? Ah, my sweet, my sweet wife who uh, was married to another man before me. Obviously pure. Obviously pure. <laughs> okay, they say. Okay, I'm going to capture this place back. Okay, 83% we're back. These little armies around here are going to be really annoying. Where are you going, Stone Dance? Okay, because they know they can catch that. Okay, well if they head up that way, I can then corner them. So that's great, actually. I want them to head up that way. So we can corner them, defeat them, then I can head north. Okay, we have little specks of northern armies around there. Nothing too big. The Reacher, for some reason, is over there. Oh, there we go. They've managed to raise a bigger army. Oh, Grandmaster Pycelle has died. Ah, oh, I like Grandmaster Pycelle. I don't know what it is. My <laughs> my favourite characters aren't generally the characters that I like. It's weird. I generally like characters that are interesting characters. If you get what I mean. It's really odd. I generally tend to like characters people don't like. Don't know why that is. I've never been that fond of Daenerys or Jon Snow. I don't know why. Never, no, don't know why. Just never been as fond of them as other characters. It's always the, the small side characters and stuff, like Bronn or, um, well, Tyrion's always been one of my favorite. But I think he's like everyone's favorite. Ah, there we go. The Regency is ended. I'm now of legal age. Okay. Amen, the acolyte. Okay. Okay. So he's a Reachman, so we've a Reachman as our maester. Okay, interesting. So I need to pick an ambition. Um, a son would probably be the best one. That's probably the one you'd most likely choose. Definitely not improve learning. I don't think he gives a, a tiddle about that. Is tiddle a word? Did I just make up a word? I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> we can throw Cersei into a prison. Do you know what? We could just make you remarry. <laughs> you could marry Edric Storm. You could marry Littlefinger. Oh my god, we could marry her as a Littlefinger. <laughs> that would be hilarious. A lot of kettlebacks. Podrick Payne, we could marry her to Podrick Payne. <laughs> that reminds you, what am I going to do with Sansa? What am I going to do with her? What do I want to do with her? Okay, still no Northern Army's coming. Oh, there's a... Damn, every time I try and go away to sort things out, another little army appears. Huh. What are you doing, Mace? Why are you just standing there in Blackhaven? That's our place. You're not capturing anywhere, and you're not defeating any foes. What are you doing? The Dornish aren't coming up. They're not coming up to help them or anything. I don't know what you're doing. Dear King Joffrey of the Iron Throne, I hereby invite you to the wedding of Lord Mar Paramount Tywin Lannister and Lady Paramount Joy Lannister in Driftmark. Really? You're married? Okay. <laughs> My 59-year-old grandfather is marrying a 14-year-old Lannister. So someone's our own family. Yes, she's a bastard, but still. Geron Lannister. Possibly only went missing. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, we'll travel to the feast, but that is just odd, even for you, Tywin. Oh yeah, and Tywin. I always like Tywin as well. That's another character I always like. It's never the main characters. Renly as well. I liked Renly as well. I liked him in the books more than the TV show, but the TV show was still... Okay. Languid Hall. Where's the Languid Hall? Oh, for God damn it. Just capture that army. Oh, yeah, Littlefinger. I always like Littlefinger. Oh, another army appeared. 
I really liked actually all the politics stuff in uh, and the back and intrigue. Backstabbing, plot, and intrigue in King's Landing is always one of my favourite parts. Okay, we got to the wedding. For bloody Tywin. When are you going to get away? 22nd of March. I won't go through the wedding because I've gone through so many weddings during these Let's Plays. I you just taking me around in a wild goose chase. It's ridiculously annoying. Yes, okay, we caught up to them. Thank God. In the chaos of battle, your men have managed to corner Cedric. He resisted bravely. Okay. Well, he's not exactly a good... <laughs> not exactly a notable person, to be honest. Okay, so that's that army done. So all the big armies in the Stormlands are taken care of. They're going to catch a summer hall. Why is only 12 men defending? Jesus. We're going to have to head down here, aren't we? God damn. The bedding, oh my god. Imagine a bedding for a 60 year old man and a 14 year old girl. That sounds horrible. <laughs> Tywin, you sneaky devil. The High Septon? What's the High Septon one? Buy Petra's loyalty. Can you end that plot? No. Ooh. Stop backing a plot. Prester. No. We're going to have to deal with you later then. Okay, Lord Goodwin of Galas Grey, his treason is one thing, but that a trance stands beside the Iron Throne, carrying the very sword sworn to defend your life. Can such a knight be trusted to honour his vows before his family? Huh. What do I... Okay, do I take him to the... Do I go off of his head or take him for a traitor? I'd say off of his head. I think Joffrey's had enough of traitors. Off of his head! This member of the King's Guard has died. There we go. You look on as a traitor as a traitor in your King's Guard is dragged up to the block. In one swift stroke, justice is done. Great. We had to get rid of him. It you know it's not worth the risk. His family are traitors. That means he's a traitor. I can't have him protecting me. 